I mentioned was the dynamicism of the orb, not just the orb player, but the orb itself. It's consistently kind of changing hands from round to round. And then not only do you not know who's going to have it, you don't know where it's going to be posted up, and it does create a little bit of dissension. So uh, I think that Ancient is also a map where you can get a lot of value out of that, just consistently being dynamic and uh, trying to shut off some of those angles. Yeah, and I mean, just I just double checked and saw the stats. Then it does seem like they're actually fairly equal on in regards to like stats on ancient as actual specific players in and out of these teams. So I'm interested to see what they're going to be able to do slightly differently. But we're going to be starting out the game on ancient, and it's going to be starting off quite fast. Some initial damage over towards Mutris, not too much though. Just uh, just AC. Some jewelries over towards Shrox. <laughs> His other teammate crews are going to be holding them off over towards a fairly difficult spot over towards A, and they're going to have to hold it fairly difficultly. Going to be able to get a kill. Kree's going to be taking down Mutris. Easy headshot of the USP. Exactly what you're going to be wanting here. So just sitting in cave, waiting for these players to potentially push on towards sight. Oh, that was very close. On over towards A. So nice little distraction versus these players. Twist going to be able to get first kill. Going up against Just. Oh, and a bit of a 1v1 up by his teammate pushes up has to reload luckily for him pleasant's gonna be behind him gonna be able to get a follow-up kill nice trade he's over towards the actual site as well gonna be able to get the final two kills nice and easy fairly clinical they lost one player but not too bad yeah, I was actually really happy with how Saw played that for the most part. I like the idea behind it. You know, you make a little bit of noise over towards Donut, and uh, in the meantime, the, the bomb is making its way up towards the A site. And unfortunately, they kind of get caught out in these unfavorable 1v1s, uh, and they're just not able to accurate or adequately use the environment to give themselves that little bit of cover. Uh, and yeah, a really good retake there from, from Finest. Uh, as you said, quite clinical. Uh, but of course, that was just the pistol round. Uh, what does interest me is how much much forcing is happening here, particularly from Saw. Yeah, I well, I mean, going into this, I mean, with obviously with the way the economy works, I, I kind of expected it. The Galil's going to be so much worse. Same for my hands, but Kree's going to be the first one under fire. Well, literally, in that case, he has switched on over, taking a little bit of a dangerous uh, position within the dig area here. Might just be really beneficial to him with the MP9, trying to do as much damage as he can. Can't really hit anything through that. So Kree's on the other hand. He has also taken a lot of HP damage. We're just holding over to Hill. Look, do it for the spray. Pleasant's not falling for it low. He's going to spray back through. No, oh, I was waiting for him to be able to hit those shots, but unfortunately, <laughs> no, he couldn't through this, see through the smoke. I like the patient play. You know, obviously on pistols, you tend to see a little bit more random aggression. And once you've invested a little bit into the spy, you, you definitely want to play that a little bit more carefully. And there's a little bit of utility used fairly early on. So now saw in a bit of a rough patch where they only have flashes uh, and not terribly much else to kind of find a way in. Definitely not. So we're going to be seeing a push up towards the B side. It's going to be a two versus four situation. It's going to be an advantage on the side of T's. going to be able to get the bomb down. Rome is going to be able to get one kill. Followed up by Second Wars. Both of the sprays are through the smoke. CT's completely lackluster in regards to their defensive capabilities here. Down to three players and a three versus five. This is the point you just turn around and give up, right? You, you, don't, you don't continue to push that. You save these weapons and try to bring them back in the next round. Oh yeah, I mean, considering what they invested into this round, absolutely. Also, I'm a clown. There weren't flashes, there were smokes. And they were used perfectly. Great job there from Saw to kind of <laughs> shut down those sightlines, get that bomb planted, and get themselves into nice positions to make sure that they can hold on to it. Oh, okay, Arky, getting caught out there, and obviously looking for those exit frags. You don't want to allow them to hold on to their weaponry, but here again, just play it safe. They've managed to hold on to the majority of what they spent their cash on. So at least they'll have that heading into the next round. They do need to be uh, careful because, of course, Anarchy, as we mentioned it before, has the sniper rifle, the AWP available, uh, and looking for just the smallest opportunity to crack into that attacking side and, and disallow them from getting any sort of value. I wasn't sure. I think he might have just been able to pick up that AWP there because he had the famous for a moment, if I'm right, saying. I might be confused there. Uh, but either way, they managed to recover one of the M4s or the AWPs. So this is going to be proven fairly valuable, especially down that long sight line that he's looking for. He's going to be down on a 5-7. He's in a really good position for to, to make full use out of this. But versus a Mac 10 it's really not the weapon you're going to be wanting to use. And being up close and personal against that kind of uh, firepower, the, the box of bullets, as it were, it's not going to be what you want, but over towards a main, we have got a you know a sneaky couple of players going to be pushing on over. Pleasant's going to be the first one to lose his head, 
as he's going to get taken down by just oh, nice bit of act of, act of aggression here over towards a site they're looking mm. to take over this towards donut there is one more player left over and it's going to be twisty finds another kill mutrus is going to be cool fairly early so i don't know going to turn around but the 5-7 prevails gets the kill another bomb is looking to go down but arnica has something to say about this takes down one the bomb goes down, but it's going to be very difficult to try and defend this versus four players with just two of you left alive. They're going to have to do a lot of work. And the AWP is in fantastic position. Gets the kill. Now a one versus four situation, but the headshot comes through, followed by another one. The MP9, long distance. The new meta sniper. The very first kill onto Plesson is just a, a lesson in dry peeking, I suppose. Uh, but it doesn't actually get terribly much done towards the end of the round because he's able to hand over the information to the rest of Finest who are rotating around. Hey, there's two players here. Be on your guard. Uh, and of course, they don't have really good weapons. So yeah, you should be good to go. And they are able to kind of clean up that little bit of a uh, kerfuffle in mid, make their way over onto the bomb site. And again, you know, the, we. Utility, we know, is super important, and it kind of plays out really well in that round. You see a little bit of the util coming out very, very early on from Sword to try to bait out a little bit, to try to get some information. All that util is being used over on B. They start rot rotating over onto A, but unfortunately, Finest uh, kind of mentioned their patience, and it comes through again. They don't allow themselves to kind of get baited. They don't over-rotate. They see what's happening. They give themselves a moment to figure it out, and then they're able to retake over towards A. Again, pretty chemical round. Yeah, I, I do just want to bring out Anarcho's uh, play of the AWP there. He played super slow. He wasn't scoping in unless he absolutely needed to. Let a player walk into his scope rather than going in for the act of aggression. And that's exactly how he needs to be playing that position. So the fact that you brought him up as one, one to watch, I, I, I like uh, earlier on, I think he needs to be, especially with that kind of play. But just he's going to be pushing in AK in hand, but Anarcho's has AWP in hand. He's going to be able to take the stick, make full use out of it, gets one kill. He's going to be able to, Aki rather is going to be able to get a nice trade off, but not going to be enough. He's going to be left in a 1v3 situation. He takes down two, can't quite find a third, but he's going to go for the spray through the boxes. Going to do a lot of damage, actually. Mutra is going to be down to 35 HP, an AK in hand, but unfortunately, Twist is just on point today. Picks up the AWP, finishes off the round. It's going to be a 3 1 lineup here. Team Fine is taking the lead. Are you mentioning Anarcha is literally two seconds before he absolutely <laughs> pops off again? Just had the, the god spot angle. And again, that, that dynamic all play, you know, previous round he was over on A, now he's over on B, and Soul start to think, oh, well, maybe he's going to be on the A side. No, there he is over on B, and again, just holding a really good angle and able to kind of jiggle a little bit, make sure that he doesn't get caught out. Uh, yeah, just we mentioned him already, and he's showing exactly why. Well... We've got to see the Portuguese team here sort of wake up a little bit. Pleasant though, going to be able to take down the round for the T's. Just going to be the last one left alive. There's just nothing they can do in this round. Bit of a throwaway one. Seems mm -hmm. like they could get any kills, but the, the perfect aggression and use of utility from the team finest was just uh, fantastic there. You can't be afraid uh, to mm -hmm. use utility versus teams. Are, may, they may well just be on uh, pistols, but that's when they can act to the most aggressive. I like Pleasant's positioning as well. He kind of seems to hold up over towards mid fairly often, but he's never holding the same angle twice. And that was one of the other things I kind of noticed about Finest, where very often they'll take these really interesting off angles and then try and work off of that, kind of catch the opponent off guard, and it's working out quite well. I've got to say, I absolutely love this uh, map, like, radar from here. So it shows all the details we need, which <laughs> is going to have to keep with Nile. These details, that perfect flash, the grenade going to be falling up. That might well just take out the player. Doesn't quite find the damage. The smoke's going to be going down. It's going to be low on bullets. He doesn't manage to take down one. Arky's going to kill him. Push over towards the site, but Shox is doing a fantastic job. Takes both of them out in counter. Nice trade here. Perfect team work. Rose over the side, but he's going to be completely white. Completely white on this run. He's going to get taken down, but Mutra's with the trade off. Two versus three. Narquez might just be the answer here. Twist. With the distraction through the smoke, he's going to take a shot hit and finally just sprays through it. Finds one through there. That's just going to be, I don't know, getting found. Mutris. Two versus one. Getting ever closer here. Mutris knows that they have his uh, number. Even up the numbers, he's finally going to be able to get a kill here. It's going to be pleasant. Fairly new member to the roster of Team Finest. Bomb is on site at the moment. Hmm. You know, Pleasant doesn't really know. He, he, he could have gone at this point, but it's fairly hard to be able to get that rotation on over, especially with uh, the viewpoint you have as a player that's just died. You can tell, like, okay, 
he's not actually run straight on the side and picked it up. And at that point, you just hold this angle. And that's what, exactly what he's doing. He's not playing over aggressive. If he has to rotate, mm -hmm. he will. Grenade is going to go out, but he has given away himself with the sound cue. And he's just a little bit too uncertain with himself. He's not quite sure where this player is. Going to pick up the bomb. Spots out the player, looks to lay down the bomb. He has 10 seconds left. He has to plant it. Pleasant doesn't really have too much to play. He's going to be going out. It's going to flash both of them, but it doesn't matter. Pleasant holds his angle. Just so confident. Takes the shot exactly when he needed. Oh, that was so winnable as well. I mean, to be fair, he does really well to bring it down all the way to that one versus one. And as you say, you know, we have cast division. We can see exactly where Pleasant is holding up and just doesn't have that information. And despite hearing the footsteps, I was surprised. I say surprise. Obviously, he had to go for the plant. He was running out of time, but he spots at the shoulder. And you're, you're kind of playing off the idea that that player is expecting you. Pleasant is expecting you to potentially swing out again. So he's able to at least get the plant, the extra little bit of credits in the back pocket. But unfortunately, the, the timing from Pleasant was just too good. They are. Muchas has managed to make it up through towards mid, along with his uh, teammate. They have taken a decent damage, but Just is going to turn around oh. and find Screeze. What are you doing? He was completely over there, just spraying basically into a stone wall. I'm not quite sure what that play was, but <laughs> it's going to be unfortunate. Leaving the, the potential advantage actually on Source side, they can now take a site 5 to 2 ratio in their favor. This is exactly what they've been asking for. Looking around the corner, gets the headshot onto Pleasant. Pleasant, a little bit disappointed with the performance there. And Shox is going to get found, a key player, and this round is over. There is just no way this is going to come back. I mean, he, you know what? It could potentially, but it's just that they're not going to risk it. <laughs> oh, absolutely. I mean, you don't want to uh, lose the AWP. Even though you've won quite a few rounds in a row and you're not terribly concerned about your economy, you still don't want to give that away, especially when you know that Saw's economy is pretty messy right now. Even if they, well, even when they win this round, it's not perfect. So you don't want to give that away for free. Uh, and, you know, you, you pointed out Kriya's right at the beginning there. A, bit of a misplay to be spotted out so far in the open and that gives Saw everything they need because that's the only player that's really standing between them and the B site and yes finest are able to rotate but by the time they get there it's it's too little too late. Saw actually played that really well as well. They find the opening, push the advantage, make sure that they're able to get that bomb down. A pretty good round all things considered. Yeah, I, I, I think they, they played that very well on that front. They shut it down and they didn't play passive. As, as soon as they knew they took down Kreese, they're like, okay, cool. We can take the man advantage over towards mm -hmm. a uh, a site, so B site. And they did exactly that through a fairly well, multiple passages. And I'm just interested to see what they're going to switch up this time around. There's going to be utility and guns on both sides. It's going to be a down mid here from the CT side. It works fantastically. Oh. Just right through the smoke. Can happen. It doesn't look pleasant. Going to get a double trade off there with his teammates. Kreeze are going to be out behind him, helping him, but this is now going to be going in the way of the CT's advantage. Sniper Shox is going to get found out. He just didn't expect him to be pushing through that smoke, and now the push over the wall slide is coming through, and Arkez is going to be completely shut off. He needs to go for the spray, the shot through the wall, but I don't think he can. Towards mid, finds another one. It's going to be left with the AWP player. Let's see what he's going to be made of here. Turns around over towards mid. He's got a USB in hand. The AK versus USB, and unsurprisingly... The USB doesn't win, but leaves the play with one HP. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he made it. He made it close. You know, he made it a fight. I liked how Team Finest play that. So they know that for the last few rounds, Saw have consistently been angling over towards the B side. Even when they end on A, they usually like start making a noise over towards B first. So Finest just go for like a rush out of B, um, and. Yes, they do lose quite a few players in the interim. Saw is actually able to push that back. So the idea was there, but Saw handles it perfectly. That aggression just kind of plays into how Saw are busy approaching the site. So now Team Finest probably realize, okay, maybe pushing in aggression, you know, aggression versus aggression, it becomes really difficult to make sure that you have the advantage in that situation, especially as the uh, the CT side, because you, you, you're you generally playing a more defensive position. So for you to kind of push out, to give up that space, uh, you, you're essentially playing into the T's hands, usually. Well, moving into the next round. Round nine advantage is going to be in Team Fire side, but they've only got five rounds. They need many more now on the CT side to really, well, you know, solidify their advantage. Mm -hmm. But so, they're coming back into this. They've uh, they finally woken up. Uh, probably been on a bit of a siesta, just sort of chilling around uh, for most of the day and sort of trying to make, take a read on these players. They've got an AWP in hand now. Going to be at full power in regards to their equipment, aside from maybe the M4A1 or Roman, which, I don't know, he might prefer that gun. Can be very useful. Pleasant's done a fantastic job with it so far. 
flashes have gone out over towards A. Now, this is the uh, 1v1 we want to be seeing. <laughs> the sniper versus sniper. But Narcos has the default advantage just holding that static position, not having to peek around the corner unless he wants to. So ideally, there needs to be a flash thrown out and he can go in for a hard peek. That's I, you know, I, I do want to see that. But <laughs> seeing a player getting found and the bomb drops. So that's fantastic information. Narcos has just done, done his job spectacularly. They now, they, the CTs know exactly what to play. Freeze. <gasps> the prop. Problem is, look how corralled in they are. They need to... Okay, there you go. They need to oh. do that. Oh, Pleasant's going to be able to find one. Shocks with another, but straight away, they that just fell apart in the, within the hands. Now it's going to be an Arkez versus Twist. Unsure as to where the T's are going to decide to go, because they have, like, okay, well, we can go anywhere on the map. We've just found a sneaky couple of players who'd rotated over to play fairly aggressive against us. They have given away their position. Flash out over towards B. Narquez is going to have to play a close range shotgun with this sniper right now. And <laughs> he scopes in anyway, finds one, goes in for a no scope, can't find it, turns around, tries to take the arm, does a 180, can't get the kill, but Twist is there to back him up. Much respect to that. We we finally got the one on one, and uh, you know what? Saw won that one. Oh, yeah. It was worth the wait, in fact. Um, that was also a really brazen angle to hold from Anarchus. like i think that after you get the first kill you, you your kind of first instinct is oh you should run but obviously i mean the sidelines you're not going to get anywhere so he holds the line and he gives the information that hey you can swing there's a person here and they play that quite well and of course the map control rotations from finest were amazing but didn't work out the way that they'd hoped and so able to take advantage of that but didn't really help out towards the end well, that's going to be straight off the bat. Saw so going to be down two players. They're going to be pushing on over towards the A site. They won this one on the pistol round, but they've been a little bit lackluster since then. Mutual is <laughs> behind them. Finds a player. Twist just didn't see this coming at all. Turns, but not in time as his head is going to be down. And Arquez does spot out a player, but a running headshot from Mutual coming through. They're doing absolutely fantastic, but Pleasant from the site, completely blinded, is going to be able to get a kill here. Sniper spots him, but not soon enough. Pleasant is, is a fantastic player, just absolutely shredding them. Alongside his teammates here, Shocks and Pleasant. Currently my MVP so far on this uh, the side of Team Finest. What I find funny is like, of course Mutris wasn't expected back there. How did he get all the way into um, CT spawn completely unchecked? That's crazy. Doesn't do quite enough though. And that's a, a really good point for Finest. They have done really well at taking map control. Whether it's really early on and then kind of fanning out, starting to isolate Saw into a particular area of the map, or if it's very, very early or late game, rather, when you're kind of moving in for a potential retake scenario, then you start pushing in from all sides. And again, isolating. So even if Saw decide, oh, this wasn't the best idea, we should turn back, they can't. They're going to run directly into Team Finest. And even if it happens like two rounds back where they are able to win out the trades, they still find themselves in an odd position because it's two versus two so finest have actually been doing a really good job of denying saw space and denying them rotations and that i think has been the biggest thorn in their side you know saw i kind of noted uh, in yesterday's games they tend to be quite aggressive and when they start with kind of slower defaults they tend to do a little bit better so maybe that's what the change up needs to be but here on a pistol round seems unlikely yeah, I mean, Mutris has got the Galil. It's a little bit of a questionable buy here, but you know what? It's not going to be too bad. It could open up the whole map for you. That's going to be in a focus with his teammate Craze. And they're going to be able to take down one. And the Galil's going to come out in fantastic shoes, but unfortunately not enough. But Rome with the Deagle is going to be able to take down one, but that's going to be all she wrote. And that is going to be a nice MP9 kill, gathering up as much cash as they can. But losing two players is still going to be causing them for, like a, a lot of cost. That's going to be 4.1k left on Pleasant at the end of that round. Yeah, I mean, Team Finest at this point, what I like to call trust fund babies. Uh, they are riding the cash flow wave at this point, feeling pretty confident. Um, and so, of course, still in a pretty rough spot. And yes, they're able to full buy up here. They've got quite a lot of good utility to use as well. And I like the fact that they're defaulting a little bit more across the map this time around. Don't want to allow themselves in that isolated position. But Twist is going to shut that down. Just push us straight through. Zero respect for their, their space at all. <laughs> it's just like, nope. I, I'm gonna I'm gonna take full advantage for us on this reason. We can over towards the B site, but a little bit too late. They left this open completely. Over towards mid, finds Pleasant MP9. Unfortunately, not gonna win that duel. He might have hit the head or the body, whatever it may be. It doesn't matter. It's an MP9 versus an AK. Shocks. 
He's managed quite a lot of uh, smoke kills through this point. Before, but he's going to have to wait for the rest of his teammates to try and help him over here. Three versus four. And most of the teams have backed away from the site. But chucking in the, the flashes and util to make full use out of this. And Sinu Grenade is back from the CT side. It's going to be super difficult for them to be able to clutch out. Uh, especially with the spams going out from a uh, safe position in the caves here. Narquez waiting for the shots, but I don't think they've got this. No They're going to have to back away from this one. So Dado going to be peeking around the corner. He's going to be able to for himself to pick up for the next round, but he's going to have to fight this. He clutches Ooh. it out. 14 HP in hand. The bomb wasn't going to go off. Uh, I'll get defused, but it was always important to kill. get the kill there. Well, Stodo, uh, Stododo wins the second 1v1 versus Anarchist, but he does it with a rifle, so that's pretty cool. Uh, definitely a feather in the cap. That was a far better round from Saw. I kind of mentioned how I wanted to see them take a, a slower, more map-controlled default, and it really works out. You know, Finest get that first kill uh, all the way over towards A long, and they think, oh, well, it's probably going to be an A push now because we've found someone, and they don't realize that Saw have started to change up the game a little bit. That's what you've got to do. Keep the enemy team kind of on the back foot. Keep them guessing, well, what is the next plan? going to be finest year again you know going for relatively strong mid control uh, and pretty unaware of what the hell are all going to do now they take it slow and that's exactly what it seemingly has been and <laughs> i think they're they're ready and waiting for the early push over towards the uh, a site site this time so like nope mm -hmm. we're not going to get caught off guard by this uh this time so it's always good to see that they l like learn from their mistake. All I will say is, Saw mm -hmm. currently only have three smokes, a flash, and a molly, but that is actually more than the side of CT. So the use of smokes are going to have to be. Well, oh, there goes one. That's half of the utility gone on the side of CT. Gonna allow Creed to go through, but he's tagged down. He finds the information though. He's able to call out the fact that yeah, there is presence in mid. There is a big presence, and that Blamer getting his spray used over towards here, and finally going to be able to. Uh, get the kill so shocks using that spray that blame man obviously came up with fairly good good moves from these players shocks probably yeah definitely one of my highest rated players so far on this map i do want to see him pick up a couple of extra kills here 30 seconds clock this push is going to be coming through rome is going to be able to find the kill onto players and he was holding up towards mid this opens up a big portion of the map but it's going to allow the potential fake over towards b to come into context Slowly running out of time here, though. Decision does need to be made. And okay, push over towards B to try and create a fake out. Doesn't pull the rotation. But they're pushing towards A and they haven't caught twist. Oh, twist finds two, but couldn't find the third. But makes it a one v two. This is a winnable situation. And our guys is going to be pushing. Up. He's going to be up on information. It's a nice distraction, but is it going to be enough? It is. Shocks runs around the corner with the M4 and is going to be able to get that kill. <laughs> Just staring at the dead body. Love it. As you do. <laughs> yeah. Bit as of a devastating know. round there for Saw. Like they, they had a really solid advantage in that one. Unfortunately, didn't clock the corner. I suppose. Are you expecting Twist to be there? No, not really. Not when you've just had one of your players die over on the B side. You're trying to fake out that it's going to be a B push instead, and you're really hoping that all of Finest have fallen for it. And I, the the slower default definitely worked better, but I feel like it might just be a little, you know, too little, too late. Only two rounds left here. And there, there are two rounds that Saw desperately need to kind of get into the second half with a, with a better chance. Unfortunately, with the spy on this round, okay, next round we should have a little bit more to play with, but right now it's it's dire straits. Dire straits indeed. L luckily on the T side, especially in the if you have the bonus of the loser economy, you're going to be getting quite a decent mm. amount of money, and you have the AK on hand as well. But it's going to be other fun one, maybe even the second one. No, it's not going to happen. Shocks, he's right there to be able to try and help him. Twist is going to have to defend against three people pushing him. The Mac 10 is going to run around the corner. Going to be able to find the kill as well. Shocks turns around. Narquez is going to be going in for the quick shots. Gets it as well. Pleasant is going to be joining in. The Deagle from Arky finds one. But unfortunately for him, Pleasant is on site. Gets the kill. And Shocks with the final one as well. Fairly good round there. And we go through to the final round of this half. Yeah, I mean, as we said, you know, Sword didn't really have anything to use in that round. They had, like, no utility. They were on a fairly awkward buy as well uh, so not a, not a whole lot in the tank as we head into this last round it's much of a muchness i suppose still not really in it we're looking at an 11-4 here and we can start to turn things around on the next half hit with the Mac 10 trying to find the early kill does a lot of damage but unfortunately for him dropped down to 39 hp even less as a grenade only does three points of hp damage so 
or something there and didn't quite deliver the full blow that it needed to increase. Good, good job of holding this position. Uh, Pleasant going to be able to find a kill, but tagged down to 12 HP. Shocks trying to go in for the sprays through the wall. Can't quite find it. Uh, we're going to have to see Pleasant back off. They've held over towards the A site fairly decently in other rounds. Now they're going to have to switch on over and help try and defend and maybe even take uh, B site as we see a push come in, but it's denied by the placement of a single incendiary grenade. This is kind of what happens when you end on your entry to be on one specific point just to spot it. Kreese, he's in a good position. He's going to be able to find one on the side of the B mark. He's going to be able to get a kill, but they line up. Kreese finds one out from the sidelines. It's going to be shocked. He gets a kill, but the player's going to be pushing on him again. He's pushing out from behind him. It's going to be Stadado with the MAC-10. Finally kills him. This chance to be able to pick up the M4. But it doesn't have a huge amount of bullets left in it. Maybe peeking out finds one anyway. He doesn't need loads of bullets. All he needs is two if he can get those headshots twist. Left in an interesting situation here. He now has no information as to where this player is aside from. Oh, he's going to be on B site. Maybe he'll push. So I don't know. He's going to be pushing back around, trying to find a decent wrapping route, which he has out through Dying Up. Finally reloads that gun. Thank God that was making me look, feeling a little <laughs> bit anxious. This is no way that Twist expects that. The, the rotate all the oh. way over towards the A site. This is no way. And now down to a one versus one, and uh, Stadoto at, at a serious health disadvantage here, but all it takes is a couple of dinks, you know? Uh, it's definitely doable, definitely winnable. We've now, we've now used the last little bit of utility. I see there's one flash left, but it's it's twists. I'm not too sure if Stadoto's going to be able to play. Oh. oh! He just walks straight out. He's just got confidence. Straight up on for that one. So really a good first half here from a sore side. But not quite good enough as a team finest are going to be able to find at 10 rounds. We're going to pop on over towards a quick break and we'll be back in about, well, a couple of moments. Well, welcome back. We've just seen Saw do, no, not so good on the T side, but they managed to get five rounds, which is pretty good, especially on the CT side of map like Ancient. Team Finest, good start on their side, but they're now going to have to find the first battles of the T side. Good way to kick it off. <laughs> yeah, it's straight up on that front, and well, we're going to be seeing a saw unfortunately get torn apart, but so good the, the other side as well. So, I don't know, with the, the USP, going to be able to hit some nice shots, just going to be lurking around the sidelines, making sure that if anyone does push, you catch them off guard, but you know what? He hasn't caught Pleasant. Pleasant's all the way over towards CT side. He is going to get started, and he gets the kill. This is pretty much the B site in their control now. They're to try and help them, and just unfortunately crumbles. So... They now have a one person. Oh, wow. Yeah, you kind of mentioned how Pleasant just found his way up towards CT spawn, which is a little bit ridiculous. And it's not the first time we've seen that happen. Okay, previously it was Saw. Uh, but Finest, anything you can do, I can do better, I suppose. And I, I suppose the same can be said for themselves. They have really good map control on their defensive or on their CT half. And now as we move over onto the T side, they actually do the exact same thing. They fan out quite nicely, even on the pistol round, which very often can be fairly chaotic and, and rushy. Uh, they, they opt to go for a slightly slower style, make sure that they have control of the map, make sure that Saw can't do to them what they did to Saw, which was, of course, cut off those lines of rotation when they would potentially really really need it so a really solid round or start a really solid kickoff for finest uh, on their their t side and gets them ever closer to the match point of course came into this half at double digits which is immediately a rough place but saw i mean as you said it's a ct sided map so i not count them out just yet yeah they're not gonna be uh looking that healthy whilst they're by here yeah. Mm. They are going to have to buy pistols, which is fair enough. I'm going to throw away. We spotted a player with just a 5 the Deagle player, unfortunately. Oh, my. CT side not going to be able to take any shots. And we're going to be split over with that. Deagle not going to land any hits there. 
A couple of players on the T side are going to be tagged down by some others. So I don't know with the wall bang through this. If he managed to hit anyone on there, that'd be a big surprise and obviously a huge benefit to their side. I love the fact that <laughs> this player is using the banana skin here. Aki, I completely respect that. That's one of the older skins, actually, I think, for the 5-7, if I remember correctly. But hopefully it's going to be able to give him a lot of skill because there's going to be push over here. He can't quite spot anyone. They're now going to be pushing out. He knows this. He's going to be holding it. He's going in for the shots. It doesn't work. So I don't know. It's going to get taken down as well. That's going to leave a complete disadvantage of the time. With the guns and shots through the smoke. And Arquez is just proving his uh, prowess here. Just slaughtering the players on the CT side. There's just really not much they can do. Just is going to be here. He takes a shot. Misses. Mutras with the 5-7. Not the banana skin. The spot out a player. But they don't take down a single one. Yeah, I think it's relatively unsurprising, given that they, they didn't invest a cent into that one. Um, but you would have liked to have seen them get maybe one, maybe two. I didn't... I, I like watching Pleasant's positioning. So so he starts out at the beginning of the round over towards Yard. And then as the push, they, they kind of communicate, okay, we're going to go in for the B push. And he comes and makes his way back and then starts making his way into Cheetah, Jaguar, you know wherever you're from, whatever you, you call it, uh, and creates a nice little cross angle there. But I mean, didn't even need it, to be honest. Finest just completely overran the site. Kree's going to be the first one over towards the B site. But he's going to open up for his team. It's going to be fairly Oof. easy. There are just default pistols, maybe a couple of P250s here. No. Oh, yeah, there are actually on Justin Roman. Oh, he might just be able to find a kill. No. Double headshot him. Turns around, can't quite get it, but that's close. I, I respect this round from the uh, other side. They managed to get two kills. Rome okay. might be able to uh, collect a couple from his side. Every kill he can get is going to be beneficial. His oh, is now going to be on their 13th round. That's huge. Yeah, that's devastating for Saul. Um, especially, you know, after, and now we start to see exactly why they weren't kind of spending anything because now they're going to come in guns blazing. And it, it still is a bit iffy because this is, as we've said, CT sided. So we were kind of expecting possibly a stronger performance here. And uh, the thing that I was lauding Team Finest about, how they take such good map control, so kind of do the opposite. They tend to hang really far back. They don't really push out, take space. Okay, it has been difficult with the weaponry that they've had available to them. So I'm hoping now that we see that change up a little bit because the map control is so important. We saw how Finest were able to consistently push Saw into unfavorable positions, stop them from being able to rotate out. And even if Finest lose their life in the battle, they usually take down one or two with them. So they inevitably win the war so i want to see Saul potentially kind of change that up now that they have so much to work with uh in this next round yeah, i mean if they do lose this one with zero kills they're only going to have on all of them around like 3.6 3.7k mm -hmm. on a couple of players so be fairly cool on the next purchase around they want to buy anything next round it's going to be fairly hard a couple of pharmacies mp9s mm -hmm. and stuff to be able to play with but me and our team finest they've got lots of cash uh in, in the bank with all things considered what uh, is going to be fairly low and only 1200 but and, I mean, he will only be on like 2.6k next round if they if they still win this one. But if they win it, who cares? I have 14 rounds on the board, two rounds to potentially yeah. go to close this one out. So that's looking fairly good for them. And like you said, this is just a slow gameplay. So we're just hanging back. Yeah. They do have some control over it in, in Donut and Jaguar, but it's not massive. At least now they will be able to kind of relay a little bit of information. They're seeing the utility come out, but just, oh, that's a dangerous play. That play from Pleasant, he's just jumping up across there. Like, I, I want to know where to spray. So he jumps across the smoke as much as he can. Just is in a terrible position here. He's going to get completely caught off guard. Twist, cutting him off. He can't rotate and save himself now. Flash going in as well. That's going to allow the entrance from the T's to push in. He's going to be able to get one kill. Maybe even two. Ooh. Twist, Pleasant. They get sent to the grave very early on. We've got 40 seconds left. The rotation over towards the A site is already in progress. Distraction over towards B had happened. Now smoke's going to be going in, cutting off the donut as well. But unfortunately for them, Roman is in a key position to be able to try and help his team defend this. He's going to be the key player right now, actually. He gets a kill. They jump out. He kills the bomb holder. And now the trade off is going to be coming through. But he just can't hold on to it at all. Roman, he moves back through the smoke. And it's going to be Stadotto there to get the kill. This is how we want to see them play. That was. Fantastic. Yeah, this was much better. I will say, things were looking really dicey at the start, with Twist kind of uh, in, a, in a really dodgy position over in, in Cheetah. But 
I like how it gets held. You know, just does really well to play the angles, consistently crossing back and forth, not really allowing them to know exactly what his position is in place. And I mean, we were saying it, you know, just a really, really ballsy player. And he pushes in fairly aggressively, but because they're, they're playing the angles, he can't get that pick off. So it's a really important start to the round there for Just. Uh, and it was a really important round for Saw, obviously, to come out on top of. So hopefully they can build a little bit of momentum off the back of it. This could be the comeback that we want to be seeing. 13 rounds on the board, though. Fairly good. It's going to be very hard for Saw to be able to do this. But you know what? That last round, it reinforces me of like, okay, well, this is actually a Saw that I remember casting over the last couple of years and they might just, just he's in the, the difficult position he managed to take down one he backs up this time he's on the right side of the, the monotop there to be able to retreat take some ground cool off make sure they can keep hold of this man advantage versus this team the team aggressive twist he's gonna be able to get one can't quite take the second fantastic trade-off here they might lose just but they now have taken another kill here so three players on the side and they go towards the A site. The utility is getting thrown out. Kreeze is ready on site this time. This is a very different way of approaching it. They've made sure they've got players on site before using the utility. That flash though was bad communication on their side. Wars and build difficulty. In as well, they get the bomb down. Roman's going to be low. So is Toto. Now they're going to have to go into the retake. They've only got one flash. Two players with kits. So keep an eye on which players are going to be making it onto site. Roman tagged down the 12 HP. This molly as well is just cutting them off. It actually takes out the room, but the kill as well for Arky. This is just seemingly going completely bad from bad to worse. We just has to do fantastic there. He finds one, but he might get taken down there. The nice trade from Kreeze is going to be able to get to get the kill. And runs off into a safe space. Now one versus one. Satoru only has a well, low HP. The AK going to be in his hand, but he's his shots. It's not going to happen. He gets found, and another round on the board finest and that starts out really well for saw again it's you know it's just over in jaguar and he manages to get the first kill of the round and then there's like a little bit of a trade and so Saw they have a numbers advantage and they get themselves into a really good position they're covering a lot of their angles but finest have set up their post plants so well that no matter where you're trying to push in from you're not getting a ton of information and you're just kind of walking into crosshairs so they play that yeah, pretty well, and so uh, unfortunately now once again back down onto a very broken buy, and we're one round away from match point. This is, <laughs> if I said it was dire straits before, things are far worse now. Uh, it's the round here for the they're going to be able to achieve shots. Trying to get the spray through, get some early damage, make the late game easier for themselves. Just once again going to be sitting in this position. I do realize I'm probably spamming his name, saying it all the time, but he has been a key player in holding out the T side from the B side. But it's going to be fairly difficult on this one. Kreeze is going to get tagged though. Down to 11 HP. It's going to be a good start for the CT side, but I don't know if it's going to be enough. And look at this. They've actually completely left a rotation from Roman has sort of gone and play, but they're really sort of putting all the eggs in one basket. And it's working on the shocks. He's going to get taken down. Mutra's going to get killed. But we've seen this before. We've seen them get the man advantage, but they can't, couldn't quite, you know, turn it around into a win last round. They might be able to do it this time. He keeps it with MP9, but he can't get the kill. Trade off is going to happen, but straight away, T's with a fantastic position and get a kill. Arky, I think, has to there. They're going to be coming up fast. He's going to get killed. Trade like, once again. He's going to be left in a 1 v 2. Doesn't happen. And Mutris just being a key player. Going to be able to get a couple of kills mm -hmm. that round and really just help his team out. But they're still half. I got half a little worried. Yeah, I was, I was pretty yeah, worried I was... though. Because <laughs> like they, they get clearly a little paranoid. They start rotating over towards A, as you said. They kind of left it completely open, and then uh, Finest managed to starve them of a little bit of information, and so they find themselves in a position of paranoia. Like, okay, well, what is happening now? What, where do we go? And they start the rotation over. By the time the hit comes in, I'm like, oh no, there's no time. But they actually managed to use that to their advantage. They peek together, make sure that they're covering each other uh, in the, the the double swing, and they're able to do a little bit of clean up there. Now with Finest down on pistols, they have a really solid chance here to stop them from really getting in onto the site they're still of course playing a very respectful game here you know just because the team is on pistols you don't want to play unnecessarily aggressively you don't want to take any unnecessary chances they're still half the score uh, and they need to be very weary uh, here comes the push in but the slain from rome with the envoy one going to be able to get a lot of 
which was going to be coming through. He gets a double kill, but Musi Grease managed to take down one, but that's going to be all she wrote. He falls to the wayside. Mucha's just going to be able to pick up a few kills that round. Some extra money in the bank, and they need to rebuild this bank massively and try to mm -hmm. do their best to keep Team Finest at the lowest. Uh, this has been a really good resurgence, though. And Okay, so previous round, you kind of expect to go fairly handedly. Yes, they did have uh, what we well, I like to term the hero rifle, um, but it didn't really net them any solid results there. They did get the one kill, but it's not massive, and it doesn't really dent the economy to a point where we're so unable to stay in this one. And now I'm seeing map control that I've wanted to see from them for the longest time. Oh, just with the first kill, he's holding this position fantastically, and they're playing up a grand thing. It's not going to work. He takes that one, maybe two, maybe even three. We can't get it. It's going to be pleasant with the kill. Mutris is going to be able to find an Arquez, and it's going to be leaving pleasant with a oh, very low HP. 24 HP in one versus 44 HP. He's going to be around the corner. Gets a bit of damage, but the wall bang from Arky comes through, playing it safe. I love the fact that he was just not overconfident, didn't go for the overpeak. He doesn't mm -hmm. want to die, especially if they've already lost one player's worth of economy. Yeah, it's exactly as you say. They want to keep their money as high as humanly possible for these next few rounds because they know that if they lose so much as one round, they find themselves on match point. And it's the worst possible position for them to be in. So we're starting to see the momentum growing. We saw some great uh, oh. map control there as well. Ooh. Stato with the fantastic boost there, getting up into a position which, you know what, Love may it. not be expected. This is the kind of play I expect and want to be seeing from Saw. Unfortunately, it didn't turn into anything, but allowed them to gain a, a bit of information. I, I love that so much. I, I've, I've bunny hopped and mm -hmm. used movement on and off for the past, well, I guess 12, 15 years on CS and uh, CS. Like, and Stato misses that shot. He's not going to quite be able to achieve what he needed to on that front, but he's going to get supported from the B side as well. Arky has to be careful here, can't overcommit. Hopefully he needs to hold on to the, the, the B side with the rest of his teammates and not push him towards mid, even for that information play. Mutra's going to get pushed though. Never mind. Narquez decides against it, takes, turns around, takes down the auto. That might be a gun that he wants to pick yeah. up, but Justin's going to be able to get a kill. He turns around, supports him with that one, but unfortunately is going to lose his life. Demetrius, meanwhile, over towards the A site, is going to be able to get a kill of his own, leaving it as a, a two versus two situation. CT is looking fairly healthy here. They're going to be able to retake this if they get in the right positions, but it's going to be all down to Arky. His foul is going to get spotted. He's going to get taken down. Shot with the fantastic plays, but not good enough. Mutris, currently the MVP of the side of Sword, have to say, getting mm -hmm. shot after shot and just landing those bullets. That felt like a very chaotic round from, from Finest, uncharacteristically so. Uh, it seemed like towards the, the mid to late game there, they lost the thread of what the plan was. Uh, people turned around in like weird directions, and they get caught out in unfavorable positions really easily and so and they play that really well. They just take full advantage of it. Now they, again, you know, they've found themselves in that favored spot in that sweet spot of knowing that finest are back down on pistols and they're fully in control for the moment i i absolutely love it let's see what they're gonna be able to do roman is in the team position. he's gonna be able to take down one maybe even a three but he's gonna be on low HP plus and gets a kill on him mucha is gonna get taken down Ooh. this is where it could all change these pistol rounds can't go unforgiven Kreese even has an m4 now as well so they've got the bomb down they've got the positions utility isn't that high on the side of uh saw but they have a little bit of time arky he takes down pleasant Kreese. he's going to be looking for a kill there considering he's going to be locking off the position but you know what that's in his favor he now knows that they can't come at this position for at least a couple of moments just going to be coming up from behind Ooh. fine shots that's a key kill Kreese is going to be left in a 1v3 is he going to be able to do it he takes that one maybe in three no the p250 it's just too strong 11th round on the board team finest they've got their back up against the wall and this seems to be where they're performing best well, that was very nearly an Icarus flying too close to the sun kind of moment from Saw. We spoke about it in the previous anti-eco about how they were, you know, really respecting, not taking space and uh, aggressive duels unnecessarily. That round, they kind of played a little too aggressively, it felt like. And, uh, you know, you, you don't want to disrespect a player like Plesson. And he comes up so big there. And, yeah, okay, no, unfortunately, uh, they're not able to convert it. But I think that it does kind of just give Saw the message. Like, you, you can't afford to get overconfident. Oh, the reboost had come through, so I don't know, he's going to be able to help get the kill, but <laughs> he's going to have to be careful and back off on this run. We are going to be seeing it just get one kill, and our guy's going to be finally equipped with the AWP, gets a kill on him, it's a nice trade-off, but they're going to be down to three players, but still on the T side, that should give them some kind of 
ability here on this map, but obviously they don't have the advantage at all. Rome, he's going in for the flank, gets the kill onto Kreese, and now this is going to be the message for the T's that they have to do something and do it, so do it now. Arky holding this position versus the AWP player, not exactly where he wants to be pushing, but he gets it anyway. He just ducks in. It says, oh, I can just take this chill, can I? All the shot through the smokes, I don't know, saying, I've got the AWP, I killed you the first game, I'm gonna kill you again. One goes down the shot, gonna get found through the smoke, Mutris just absolutely destroying them, and that was fairly close. I mean, respect to Saw, they had th two players yeah. having to do a big job there. There's really something to be said for being able to predict movement through utility. Smoke comes out, you're expecting somebody to push through nine times out of ten. And there, and that happens twice in that round, in fact. You know, as the bomb gets planted, you're expecting the person to be swinging out around the side through the smoke. So you spam through, you get the kill there. And it, it seems like something so minor, you know, all the pros do it, but it, there, there really is something to be said for it. It's such an important skill to have. And our team finest, like you said, definitely on the back foot, on the ropes a little bit here. I can see uh, it seems that we've taken a pause as well. We've had a couple of those throughout, and I feel like this is probably the perfect time for the finest to be taking one of those. A little bit of uh, introspection, uh, figure out how they're going to approach this next round. Because they've had some fairly good rounds in terms of their approaches, but Saul has just been really good at shutting them down. And I'd been a little worried that they hadn't been going for you know, active map control for quite a few rounds they tended to play a little bit further back but they've been fairly dynamic in how they approach the map and i think that that's also one of the things that have kept finest on their toes really enjoyed it so far team finest going to get tagged down heavily right at the start and it's going to be really giving the advantage over towards those m4s as i say that player is going to get taken down he was one of the players on the half hp so although the m4a1 may have a lower dps compared to the ak it doesn't really matter when you're half hp and this player is playing absolutely fantastic at the moment in his position. Obviously, guys, this is going to be the first map of potentially three. It's going to be, mm -hmm. uh, you know, an intriguing set of maps. Next one will be Vertigo. If we get to that, the decider will be Inferno. You know, my favorite map for best map. But we'll have to <laughs> wait and see if we're going to be able to get there. At the moment, it looks like we may well do because it's going to be a close fight. The AWP shot twist going to get taken down. Oh, down over towards mid as well. But it's going to be shots of the AK final kill. He positionally finds one, finds two. Not difficult for this man at all. Just, he's going to rotate around and help his teammate over towards the A site and get the, you know, get the save in. Finest have definitely been floundering a little bit, yeah. Definitely not the same team that we saw on the CT half. Uh, they've struggled. I had kind of lauded them at the beginning of this half because they continued to take that same really powerful, aggressive map control uh, that was consistently pushing Saw out of their comfort zone. And now, with Saw having made the adaptation, and I mean, that's such an important part. You touched on it, um, I think it was just before the half but the adaptations are so important yeah and i've loved to see how saw have done that throughout the map just to keep themselves kind of on equal footing and well, we find ourselves very much on an unequal level here so about to even out the score and in such a position where they can entirely avoid overtime they just continue on this streak and that'll be that would be something to talk about wouldn't it 10 5 half such a huge comeback from Saw. Yeah, those five rounds have proven absolute key. If they lost a single one of those, we'd be, we'd be a completely different lineup right now. But we're going to be seeing Team Finest try to take it a little bit fast. But unfortunately, Pleasant, he's going to get caught in a fire. He doesn't even realize what's happening there. <laughs> he just stood there. I was like, yeah, well, I'm done. This is fine. This is fine. Guess I'll die. <laughs> Shot's still alive. He's going to be pushing forward. So I don't know. It's going to be helping out his teammate. But Arky is going to be able to take down two. Nice and great up on that front. And that's just an easy round. It could have gone a completely different way. But Pleasant? what What's going on, mate? <laughs> I feel like there was a lot of util. Let's, let, we'll, we'll just call it util. That's the story we're sticking to it. You know, couldn't see. Um, <laughs> that, that must have been what happened. Uh, yeah, a bit of a rough start to that round. I think given the fact that it was just like a full-on B rush with pistols, I could have expected it to go more or less that way, but maybe they could have gotten a couple more kills up. Demetrius with a fantastic counter smoke, and now the damage is going to be absolutely obliterating the side of the T's. But just going to get taken down by the MAC-10. In that situation, that is not the position he wants to get found out on. This opens it up completely for the T's to know, okay, well, we now have a bit of a, a general idea as to where these players are going to be. 
One. Oh, the orb shot. The ladder. You can't miss that shot. It was a hard one. So I'll, I'll give him that one. It was a pixel shot uh, at most if he wanted to be able to hit that. But Pleasant this time, not going to get burnt down this alleyway. Well, at least not as much. He's going to go towards the site. But he doesn't look. He's going to get caught off guard. Mutra's right at the right time. And guess the frag. And now we're going to be seeing the push over towards the site as well. But he has to play aggressive. He can't stand in that position. He was completely open. Pushes over in towards that alleyway. And now the rotation might be coming through. The wall bangs as well going to be happening. But not hitting anything as of yet. And we take a little oh, bit of a slowdown. Roman was almost in such a perfect position there. Now the rotation has actually worked against them. And he's going to have to make his way all the way back. Because the A side is completely free and clear. Okay, he's going to be able to find the first kill there with the AWP on the rotation and all players. There's no way to go across that gap unless you know the AWP isn't even at you. Which is going to be super hard to be able to tell. Roman coming in from the other Ooh. side. Looking to try to help out his team. Be able to find one going in for the spray. Can't find the kill though. Shocks on CT HP. Or it would take a single headshot. He can't find it though. Rome's gonna get taken down now. Mutris and Arki gonna have to try and clutch us out. Mutris with his first kill. Man of the hour might just be able to do this two versus two situation. There might be a player behind them. No. They're not even sure where this last last two are. And that is gonna be a collapse of all things to take the 15th wow. round in Narquez. Well, like, I didn't even realize straight away. I was like, what? Yeah, it also like took me a second there. There you go. Absolutely. Solid insane. stuff. Yeah. Uh, looks like we're going to be throwing it to a quick break. And when we return, we will close out this map. Oh, after this round. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently, I just like completely missed that one. Yeah, well. <laughs> you know, it happens. It happens. Yeah. Moving on. Okay. <laughs> Narkas managed to get a really good uh, shot off on that front. That's going to be a huge difference. But again, just, just helping out his team base massively. Mutras with a grenade from mid is going to be able to get a kill. On the clutch player from last round, just gonna get wall banged by Pleasant, who has four HP. Tags him down, saying, "Here, have some of your own. Have some of your own juice." Uh, and and <laughs> he's gonna be able to get the, the damage done there. It's a bit rough losing NRK so early on in the round, though. And of course, Pleasant has picked up the AWP, but he's down to like four HP. Uh, it's also not ideal, and unfortunately, this wasn't the start to the round that they would have wanted. They needed to make this a little bit more explosive. Although I suppose both oppers on low HP. That could be fun if they if they run into one another. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> could, could could be the case. Just having the AWP though is gonna be interesting to see if you guys get anything here. Sado is obviously the usual suspect with that. The push down mid is gonna go very well though. They've got gathered themselves a lot of information they know that the t's are going to be having a sort of a bit of a push over towards the b site smoke's going to be coming out on either side we've seen just completely smoked off with the awp arc he's going to be pushing through he might get the kills here but no he looks away Trist gets the kill this could be the final round he has to clutch oh, he no. can't do it leaving it down to a two versus four situation advantage you're going to be on the side of a team finest trying to win over this first map doing their best to be able to give themselves the easiest route through these maps. Mutris, final one. Pleasant's going to go down, but nice trade-off here. Shock's going to get, get the kill. Now it's going to be an impossible task. Roman goes down. Let's switch on over towards break. We'll be back for the next game in a moment. It's going to be Vertigo. See you guys shortly. What a game. 